This is a demonstration of moment of inertia for different objects. This is a hoop, and um, it has all of its mass concentrated around its circumference. And its moment of inertia is its mass times its radius squared. That's the most, that's the highest possible moment of inertia that you can get for an object of mass m and radius r is the moment of inertia for a hoop. Next is a disc. This is uh, just a solid piece of wood that's cut in the shape of a circle. Its moment of inertia is one half times its mass times its radius squared. And the reason it's less than the moment of inertia of the hoop, assuming that both of them have the same, same mass and the same radius, is that its mass is concentrated closer to its axis of rotation. And whenever mass is close to the axis of rotation, that leads to, to less of an effect on the moment of inertia. The biggest uh, moment of inertia is when all that mass is as far as it can possibly be from the center of rotation here. This is a solid sphere and it has moment of inertia 2 fifths mr squared. That's even less than the moment of inertia of the disk. Reason is that, um, oh, this would actually look like a disk if we took a slice of the sphere, then it would look like a disk. But the rest of the sphere that you have to add on has its mass concentrated closer to the, to the center of the, of the rotation. So if we want to ask about uh, resistance to motion, then we can, um, we can say, well, let's have a race here between the hoop and the disc and find out which one wins. Which one will win? In this case, uh, the radii of the hoop and the disc are both the same. And their masses are approximately equal. But as it turns out, the mass cancels out of the calculation. And what matters in the calculation only is this factor that appears out in front of the mass and the radius. The bigger the factor out here, this factor is 1. If it's a big factor like 1, it has a large resistance to turning motion. So this, this uh, hoop it has more resistance to turning than the uh, disc does. And as a result, the disc wins the race. Why is that? It's easier for gravity to get this guy turning uh, because its moment of inertia is less. Now what about this case where we have two spheres, both of them are solid spheres, and we want to ask which one's going to win the race. Well, the blue one's going to win, right, because it has a smaller radius. As it turns out, both the mass and the radius cancel out of the calculation. And you'll find that the speed at the bottom for these two spheres, even though their radii and their masses are different, depends only on this factor two-fifths here. So the claim that I'm making is that both of these spheres, if I release them both at the same time, will, will reach the bottom at the same time. I think you can see that they came, if the race was pretty darn close, uh, assuming that I released them both at the same time.